Today we're going to begin Unit 4. This covers chapters 14, 15, 16, and 17. Unit 4 is all about probability. We're starting with chapter 14 today and getting into the beginning parts of probability. For some reason this unit seems to be one that uh, you know the students you guys struggle with but um, I, I think it's one of the most fun units. It's my favorite personally. Probability of an event occurring is a number between 0 and 1 and it indicates the likelihood of that event um, occurring. P parentheses A means the probability of event A occurring. The uh, probability can be expressed in decimal form, fraction form, or percent form. Any of those are fine with me. If the probability is 0, that means your event is never going to occur. The uh, probability would be a 0% chance of something happening. If the probability is 1, that means the event will always occur. 1 means a 100% chance. For example, let's say we were looking at all the different probabilities of uh, the outcomes of rolling a 6-sided die. Well, there's a 1 in 6 chance of rolling a 1, a 1 in 6 chance of rolling a 2, 1 in 6 chance of rolling a 3, and so on. So these are the probabilities. Notice that if you add up all the probabilities, they would add up to 1. These are all the different possible outcomes called the sample space. That's when you list out all the different possible outcomes. There's no overlap between your outcomes, and the sample space makes up 100% of the possible probability. The complement rule. The probability of not A or A not occurring is 1 minus the probability of A occurring. For example, if there's a 1 in 6 chance of rolling a 1 on a die, there's a 5 in 6 chance of not rolling a 1 on a die. If the probability of you getting stopped by a certain red light is 35% chance or 0.35, then there's a 65% chance of you not being stopped by that red light. Mutually exclusive events are two events that cannot occur at the same time. If we draw a card from a standard deck of cards, we cannot draw a 7 and an 8 at the same time using just one card. Therefore, these are mutually exclusive events. There is no overlap between them. The addition rule means that when you have mutually exclusive events, the probability of A or B occurring is the probability of A plus the probability of B. For example, working with the deck of cards again, the probability of drawing a 7 or an 8 just by drawing one card would be the probability of drawing a 7 plus the probability of drawing an 8. There are 4 out of 52 7s in the deck of cards. There are 4 out of 52 um, 8 in the eights in a deck of cards. And if we add up 4 out of 52 plus 4 out of 52, we get 8 out of 52 which reduces down to 2 out of 13. Another way to look at this is there are 13 cards in each suit. One of them is a 7, one of them is an 8, so 2 out of 13 will be our uh, reduced version of this probability. Um, the union symbol is the U, P, or standing for probability of A, U, B, is the union symbol and that means the probability of A or B occurring. Non-mutually exclusive events means that the events can occur at the same time. There is an overlap between them. The probability of A or B occurring means the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of both A and B occurring. The probability of A includes the idea of A and B. The probability of B includes the idea of A and B. And so you're subtracting out one overlap of A and B because you've double counted those cards. For example, let's say we were looking at a deck of cards and we wanted the probability of getting a red or an 8. Well, I'm counting the red 8s when I count the reds. I'm counting the red 8s when I count the 8s. So I have to subtract out an overlap once because I've double counted them. Here's how the rule works, and then I'll show you how I would use a Venn diagram. Personally, I like the Venn diagram better. We're going to start by doing the probability of getting a red plus the probability of getting an 8 and then subtract out the probability of a red 8 because we've double counted the red 8's. The probability of getting a red, there are 26 out of 52 cards that are red plus the probability of getting an 8, there are 4 out of 52 cards that are 8's minus 2 out of 52 because there are 2 out of 52 cards that are red 8's in the deck. If you add up 26 plus 4 is 30 minus 2 is 28 out of 52 and that reduces down to 7 out of 13. Now, I would personally use a Venn diagram. I like this method better. You start by um, 
putting a circle for the reds, a circle for the eights, and in the overlap you have the red eights. Now there are two out of 52 red eights in the deck. There are 24 out of 52 that are just red, not red eights, but just red themselves, not including the eights. There are two out of 52 cards that are just eights, but aren't included already in the overlap. So it's like you're already subtracting out in the left and the right side of the Venn diagram the uh, overlapping part. Now you can just add up your three pieces together. 24 plus 2 plus 2 is 28 out of 52 and again that reduces to 7 out of 13. So if you kind of like already subtract as you're putting the pieces in the Venn diagram together then um, you can just add up your three parts. If you use the formula then you add and subtract the overlap. Interdependent events. These are events um, that do not alter the uh, outcome of the other one. So for example, if uh, you know one event and how it's going to occur, it's not going to affect the other event at all. Independent events. Rolling a die, flipping a coin. The coin doesn't care what the die rolls. The die doesn't care what the coin flips. So um, one is not influencing the other one. Um, another example, you're spinning a spinner twice in succession. That means you spin it and then you spin it again. The spinner doesn't remember what it spun the last time. The spinner doesn't care what it spun the last time. They're completely independent events because the spinner is not in being influenced by what it spun the first time. It's not like the spinner says, well, crap, I just gave my last group a free homework pass, so I can't give this group a free homework pass. Um, it doesn't work that way. The multiplication rule occurs when you have independent events, and this would be for the probability of A and B occurring. The probability of A times the probability of B is how we work this out. Multiplication for and, addition means or. Here's an example. We're rolling a die and we're flipping a coin. We want the probability of getting a 4 and a head. We're going to do the probability of getting a 4 and multiply it by the probability of getting a head. The probability of getting a 4 when you flip a coin, I mean when you roll a die is 1 out of 6. The probability of getting a head when you flip a coin is 1 out of 2. Multiply them together and you get 1 out of 12. Here's another example. We have a spinner that's divided into 10 sections with numbers 1 through 10. We're spinning it twice. We want the probability of both numbers being even. There's a probability of getting an even is a 1 half chance times the probability of getting an even is also a 1 half chance. 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth for a final answer. The upside down U is the intersection symbol. That's what we use for AND. So U means OR. That means addition. Upside down U is the intersection. That means AND. And it means multiplication. Here's a little practice. Pause the video until you're ready to go through these together. Okay, number one, we want the probability that we're being stopped on Monday and stopped again on Tuesday. And means multiply. The probability of getting stopped on Monday is going to multiply by the probability of getting stopped on Tuesday. That's a .15 chance times a .15 chance, which is a .0225 chance, or 2.25% when you move your decimal. The probability of getting stopped every day. That's a five-day week, so that's the probability of getting stopped on Monday and again on Tuesday, and again on Wednesday, and again on Thursday, and again on Friday. All multiplied together because it's AND. 0.15 times 0.15 times 0.15 times 0.15 times 0.15. Also known as 0.15 to the fifth power because there's five of them. 0.000076 or 0.0076% chance if you move your decimal two places to change it to a percent. The probability of getting stopped at least one day that week Every time you see at least in a probability, you're going to work backwards. Then going in the back door. At least means going in the back door. Okay? We're going to do one minus and then the opposite of that situation. The probability of getting stopped at least once that day, or one, at least one day that week, the opposite of that would be being stopped none. So we're going to go about this the back way by saying one minus the probability of not being stopped at all. Okay? That means. 1 minus 0.85 times 0.85 times 0.85 times 0.85 times 0.85. This means we're not getting stopped at all on any of the five days. That's 1 minus 0.85 to the fifth, which is 0.5563 or 55.63 percent if you move your decimal two places. Again, at least always do 1 minus and then the opposite of that situation. Number four, the probability of you being stopped for the first time on Thursday. 
That means you were not stopped on Monday. You were not stopped on Tuesday. You were not stopped on Wednesday. But yes, you were stopped on Thursday. 0.85 times 0.85 times 0.85 times 0.15. That's also known as 0.85 to the third power times 0.15. Our answer is 0 0.0921 or 9.21 percent. The law of large numbers. We briefly looked at this when we did the experiment with rolling the two die 50 times and uh, using the random number generator to roll the die 50 times. Now, the law of large numbers says that in the long run average, the uh, you will get more of a theor the long run average will look closer to the theoretical average as the number of trials becomes larger and larger. When I had to use the random number generator to roll the die 50 times and add up the sum of the die, and I had you actually roll the two die 50 times, some of you said that, yeah, you think that if you ran more trials, they will look closer and closer together. And that's exactly what the law of large numbers is saying. The more trials you run, the theoretical um, probability is going to look more and more like the experimental, what actually is occurring. If you flip a coin ten times, you should expect about half of them to be heads and half of them to see, be tails. However, if you just do it ten times, you might not see exactly half heads and half tails. However, if you did this a million times, you're going to see more of a 50-50 chance. It's going to average out in the long run. If you repeat the process more and more times, the long run average will look closer and closer to the 50-50 split that we would expect on the theoretical average. Keep it straight, the law of large numbers does not promise um, any uh, results other than for a very large number of trials. The, uh, law, of large, uh, the lar law of large numbers is not saying that if we run 10 trials, we're going to have exactly 5 heads and exactly 5 tails. If you have a couple that has 5 children and they're all girls, it's not like they have more of a chance to have a boy the next time. There's still a 50-50 chance of having a girl versus a boy. If you're flipping a coin and you got five heads in a row, it's not like the coin's going to sit there and go, oh, I better give you a tail this time. It's still going to be a 50-50 chance of a head or a tail. Don't confuse the terms mutually exclusive and independent. Mutually exclusive means the events cannot occur at the same time. Independent means that they don't influence each other in their outcomes.